uh, we're going to talk about the definition of a derivative for functions of a complex variable. Um, so uh, yeah, um, remember, uh, for real functions, so that is functions of a real variable, uh, differentiability was a simple uh, criterion, which is um, that the function has to be continuous and smooth. By smooth, we mean that it couldn't have a sharp turning point, like the absolute value of x, right, at x equals 0. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so, so that was pretty simple. But for complex functions, well, it's not hard. I don't want to give you the wrong impression. The requirement is a bit more strict. Uh, we will talk about the geometry of this requirement in future videos, but the requirement is that we meet the cauchy riemann conditions. So in this video, we're going to use the definition of a derivative for complex functions to arrive at the cauchy riemann conditions. By the way, for complex functions, we don't say differentiable, we say analytic instead. Yeah? Cool. All right, let's get started. Recall that the complex variable z um, is x plus i, y, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to take z and map it using a function f um, and map it on to um, f of z, right? Using f, we're going to map it to f of z. And f of z, let's say, is equal to uh, u uh, plus iv. Now, notice that u and v are both functions of um, x and y. So if we want to be more explicit, we can write u of xy, comma, well, u of xy, sorry, uh, plus, not comma, plus i times v of xy. Cool. All right. That was a little delayed. Yeah, yeah, you get it. All right, cool, cool, cool. So this is the necessary start we need. And now we could write um, that uh, f prime of z must equal uh, the limit as delta z goes to 0 of f of z plus delta z minus f of z all over delta z. So far, so good. So similar to um, functions of real variable. But there's a drastic difference uh, if you uh, think a bit more carefully, which is delta z is equal to delta x, the real part, plus i times delta y, the imaginary part. So uh, really, uh, this limit uh, for functions of a complex variable is analogous to um, two variables in multivariable calculus. So, you know, if you've had multivariable calculus, you're going to understand the rest of what is to come very easily. And if you don't, I recommend that, you know, uh, you look at uh, multivariable calculus first, and that's a proper order anyway. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do to evaluate this limit is uh, take the limit as delta x goes to 0, and then uh, take the limit as delta y uh, goes to 0. And th doing that will inevitably lead us um, to the cauchy riemann conditions we seek. Yeah? Cool. All right. So let's move these guys somewhere and get started. Um, how about right here? Yeah, that sounds good. All right, and then um, for this guy, let's move it up here, and let's say that the limit along the real axis, that is delta x, is a, and um, let's say that the limit along the imaginary axis, that is delta y, is b, and I will do them in the two colors that I just wrote. All right, so um, a will have to look as follows, right? So looking at a, we see that f prime of z will have to equal the limit as delta x goes to 0 of, um, it's going to be f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And that, in terms of u and v, is going to be um, u of um, x plus delta x comma y minus u of xy. And then plus i times... Um, uh, and then it's going to be v of x plus delta x, comma y, um, and then a minus v of x, y, right? And then all of this divided by, um, all of this divided by delta x. And so let's just do delta x there and delta x there. So divided by delta x here, and then delta x here. Now, um... If you've done multivariable calculus, you'll know that uh, this here 
is just the partial derivative with respect to x of u, right? So the partial derivative of u with respect to x, that's a better way to say it. So basically, we have here, we have with that limit evaluated, limit is delta x goes to zero, this is going to turn out to be just um, ux, the partial derivative of u with respect to x. And then similarly, this is going to be um, plus i times, and then it's going to be vx. And so f of z, f prime of z rather, f prime of z is going to equal u sub x plus i v sub x. Um, that is the partial with respect to x of u um, plus i times the partial with respect to x of v. So let's write this somewhere because it's super important. All right, cool. That's looking at a that we got there, right? Now let's look at um, b and get there. All right, so for b, we're going to have to have the following, which is for b, we'll have to have limit as delta y. Well, let me also say that this is f prime of z, right? This too is f prime of z, and this time along the imaginary axis. But it's going to be limit as delta y goes to 0 of, and then it's going to be um, u of, we leave x alone this time, x comma um, y plus delta y minus u of xy, and then it's going to be plus i times um, v of x comma y plus delta y minus uh, v of x y and then we're going to divide all of this by i delta y and um, so do that here and then do that there and we're good and so delta y times i so i delta y there then i delta y here. And look at what happens. First, boom, boom, those two cancel. Second here, we can multiply by i here, and then by i in the numerator also. And notice that this is going to give us i squared, which is negative 1. So we could uh, cross that out and just put the negative right there, and we're good. Uh, and just as before, um, once we evaluate the limit there and there, we're going to get some partial derivatives, right? Specifically, here, we're going to get uh, negative i times uh, ui. And then here, we're going to get uh, plus vy, right? OK, cool. So we see that f prime of z will have to equal this. Well, we already had something else based on a that f prime of z had to equal. So um, let's get rid of this here and scoot this up and see what we've got. Well, immediately we get the Cauchy-Riemann conditions um, if we compare the real part to the real part and the imaginary part to the imaginary part. So the real parts um, are this guy and this guy. So from them, we see that we ha we'd have to have ux equal vy. ux equal vy. Um, and then from comparing the imaginary parts, we see that uh, vx has to equal negative uy. So vx has to equal negative, v, negative uy, sorry, uh, which is better said uh, in a lot of books as uy is equal to negative vx. Right? vx will have to equal negative uy is the same thing as saying uy will have to equal negative vx, and that should be easy to gather. All right, so these are the cauchy riemann conditions. If they're met, then the function f has a derivative. Um, that is, the derivative exists. And uh, in subsequent videos, I'll show you how to find uh, said derivative uh, once these conditions are met. And in fact, a lot of the time, we're going to use this here to find the derivative f prime of z. Um, it's easier of the two, I suppose. All right. All right. Um, so that's it. And keep watching. And uh, oh, yeah. Like as I said in a video I made yesterday, I will make videos for the entire uh, complex analysis course, no pun intended. And no pun intended because in complex analysis, entire means differentiable everywhere. And um, yeah, and, and a student of mine in the past told me that you shouldn't explain your jokes. But um, I figured uh, only the nerdiest of you would might understand that joke. All right, cool. Take care.